Happy Monday, Patriots fans. The preseason is finally over. Thank God. I cannot stand preseason games. We got to see a lot of players that have a lot of question marks over them. So on today's episode, we're going to talk about five winners and losers, in my opinion, from week three of the NFL preseason versus the Washington Commanders. But before I hop into that, I have one quick question for you guys. If you want more Patriots watch parties, which we have done three so far, week one, two, and three, go on ahead and hit that sub button for me. I've been having an absolute blast getting to know you guys, getting to have you guys come back week after week. And if you guys want us to go live for every single New England Patriots regular season game, go on ahead Ahead and subscribe for me. Before I hop into my winners and losers, wanted to give you guys a quick little injury update on QB1 Jacoby Brissett. As you guys know, in the first series of the game yesterday, Jacoby Brissett was hurt with a right shoulder injury. He was taken off the field, did not return, but it's also the preseason. Why would he return? Well, after the game, Jerron Mayo said Brissett's injury wasn't too scary because he would have actually been able to continue, but it's preseason. They're not going to put him back in. So it's good to know that Jacoby percent looks like he's not going to miss any time but that does put a little asterisk right there in the quarterback competition and speaking of quarterback competition let's go ahead and jump into the first winner of last night's game it is clear-cut Drake May. QB1, QB2 battle has been the headline for the New England Patriots. In my opinion, I think last night, Drake May solidified himself as the quarterback one for the New England Patriots. He said he would be ready if week one he had to go out and start. And I'm ready for him. The only thing I'm not ready for is the offensive line. Drake May is going to get his ass lit up when he starts week one, if he starts week one, that is what I am most afraid of. But let's talk about what Drake May did yesterday that put a little bit more confidence under my belt, and I know his, is because 13 for 20, 126 yards, zero interceptions, and that actually should be two touchdowns with another completion because he did hit K.J. Osborne for a touchdown, but because Chuck Okorafor decided to have multiple fragments on the offensive line, it ended up getting called back. So with that being said, I think Drake May has solidified himself as QB1. I know we still have a little while to go, two weeks exactly until the Patriots take on the Bengals, but I like what I'm seeing. If you go a little bit further in the depth chart, you're going to find Joe Milton who's been fighting for quarterback three position, and unfortunately, he is my loser of the week. Joe Milton did get to showcase his skills for the entire third and fourth quarter until Bailey Zappi came in the last two minutes. But the minute I saw Joe Milton come in, it was an overthrown pass to Tyquan Thornton, ended up completely in the hands of a Washington commander, and it ended up being a flag on the field, so it wasn't called an interception, but I saw inconsistent passes. I saw accuracy all over the place. The man is chucking it into the sidelines, and his timing was completely off. He got this one play where he took the snap, merely looked left, and just dished it out when his receiver wasn't even at his spot yet. He's trying to be everything all at once when he just needs to be Joe Milton. And here's a stat line from last night. I mean, it kind of speaks for itself. Five for 17, 78 yards. Like I said, there should be a one underneath the interception column, but because there was a flag on the play, it was ruled back. And then still no touchdown. We have yet to see him score a touchdown or set up a touchdown drive in the NFL preseason. So that was not what Joe Milton needed to fight for this roster spot, which is still up in the air with Bailey Zappi. So my question here to you guys real quick before I hop into three other winners and losers, who was the biggest winner from week three? Do you guys think it was Drake May? Do you think it was somebody else that I haven't mentioned just yet? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. While you guys are doing that, I've got to tell you the greatest app on this planet to get yourself some tickets. I'm talking about game time. Whether it's last minute or whether you guys are planning a year in advance, they got lowest price guaranteed. And the number one reason why I use game time is because I love the fact that I can see my seats before I purchase them. Plus, they're always thinking ahead. They even combine it saying, hey, if you're looking at this seat, we'll go on ahead, put it in a bundle of two seats combined. That way, you know what you're paying for yourself and the person that you're going with. And although there are still three weeks until the Patriots do come to play in Gillette Stadium versus the Seattle Seahawks, doesn't mean you have to get your tickets any later. Go on ahead, get them on game time right now. As you guys can see, they've got several 
Seats still open, and you can see exactly your view from your seats in Gillette Stadium. So if you guys want to go ahead and get started, super easy. All you have to do is download Game Time, and you're going to use Chat Sports. C H A T S P O R T S. That promo code is going to get you guys $20 off your first ticket purchase while terms do apply. One more time download Game Time, use promo code Chat Sports for $20 off your first time buying tickets while terms do apply. Because what time is it? It's game time. And let's talk about another winner, Joe Giles Harris. Talk about a man fighting for the 53-man roster. The defense was pretty meh yesterday. I'm going to be honest. You allowed Mick Sorley to look like freaking Tom Brady out there, which was ignorant. But the fact that Giles Harris really put his best foot forward here, he had multiple timely plays, not to mention five tackles, one pass deflected, and he possibly could have had a sack if there wasn't a flag thrown. But there were 19 penalties yesterday, so obviously a lot of plays are going to be called back. But I saw tenacity. I saw confidence. I saw Giles Harris being a leader out there as well. And when the 53-man roster does come out tomorrow, don't be surprised if you see his name on there. But because there's also a couple other players in that roster bubble, maybe even a Christian Ellis, don't be surprised if you don't see his name on there. This is a very tight race to make the 53-man roster, but I think in the last outing, Giles Harris proved he can make it. And let's go ahead and talk about another winner. I was waiting for this one to be in my winner's column, K.J. Osborne. They haven't used him as much as I would like to in the past couple of weeks in preseason, but last night was Osborne's chance to make the 53-man roster, and I think he solidified himself. He did have one drop, but it was an overthrown pass from Drake May to K.J. Osborne, so I'm not going to put that all on him. However, it was one of those plays where he tried to OBJ it, touched his left hand, but if you just put the right hand right there, it would have been a completion. So there is a little bit with K.J. Osborne. Not to mention, he would have had a touchdown last night if there was not an illegal formation from Chuck a core for. Yes, there were multiple and so that took back K.J. Osborne's touchdown. But I think he's going to be a really good asset. Maybe not a starter for the wide receiver room for the Patriots. But I do think he'll make his way into the depth chart coming up tomorrow. And that leads me to my loser. It's got to be Chuck, right? It has to be Chuck because how many times do you need to line up illegally for you to realize you're not on the line of scrimmage? Thankfully, Gerard Mayo also addressed this yesterday after the game saying, it's nobody's fault but Chuck's. The refs give you so many warnings to not line up wrong. You've been lining up on a line of scrimmage since you were six, and now all of a sudden you can't figure out what, where you're supposed to be. It happened on a touchdown play. It happened on a first down drive. You just can't have that, especially coming from a starter. Are you kidding me? The offensive line is shitty enough, and now you're going to put Chuck Okorafor in there who doesn't know where the line of scrimmage is? It's going to be a long season if he does not enter the win column very, very soon. But with that being said, who is your biggest loser from week three? Is it Chuck? Is it several other players out there that just could not seem to get it under their belt in week three preseason, which forced them to lose to Washington 20 to 10. Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, if you guys want more Patriots videos coming up on Patriots Today by Chat Sports and more watch parties, all you guys have to do is hit that sub button for me.